I'm the author of the Hunter Kerr series uh, and also the Scarlet Mesa series which I brought out last year. I'm bringing back Hunter Kerr again this year, It'll be the, it's his fifth outing. Uh, it's going to focus on a character that I introduced actually in the first book called the, uh, the Beast of Barnwell. Uh, a character that carried out a series of, of violent rapes uh, and a killing back in the early 70s. He was jailed uh, for life uh, and then uh, he was released. Uh, released into obscurity, everyone thought, until the discovery of two skeletons beneath uh, an old chapel uh, not far from where he lived and it set a new investigation in, in, uh, in sequence. Uh, the Barnwell investigation team got involved. A hunter realised very quickly that uh, the beast of Barnwell had returned uh, and uh, it got involved with the usual characters of Grace and Tony Bullers and uh, Mike Chapman and Barry Newstead and bring it to a nice conclusion. Uh, and that conclusion I'm going to actually bring out a reveal for you. One of the central characters actually gets killed, brutally murdered uh, towards the end uh, and I'm going to leave it at that. He is, yes, he follows, he follows my career. Um, he's, he's almost 90% of me. I mean, everything, all his background, his, his home conditions, uh, his, his environment, it it's, all mirrors mine. Uh, I chose that deliberately. I chose it because I wanted to, to make... Many people see police officers uh, as people who've got... Their, they've got dark demons within them. They're, they're drinkers, uh, heavy drinkers. Uh, and most of them solve crime while they're drunk. Uh, and that's nothing of the reality. And so I wanted to bring that home. And, uh, and, I, and, I, and I feel it's been well received that people see a character there uh, that is honest uh, and just gets on with his work and quite an ordinary guy, really. That was... Um... <laughs> That was a, a dramatic change and I, I suppose I really wanted to test that one out uh, for my own, I suppose, for my own sanity. I'd, I'd played around with the idea of introducing a strong character. I'm a fan of Linda LaPlante um, and, and Jane Tennyson was such a strong couple, uh, suffered a great deal of sexism and caught with it. And, and, and there's still fringes of that within the police service. Uh, and, uh, and I know from speaking to colleagues that it still goes on, they still have to deal with it. And I thought, oh, to bring a character here that, that can handle that quite well, although she's quite strong and quite feisty, there's a vulnerable side to her. Uh, uh, and she has to cope with all that and solve quite vicious crimes in terms of um, some Albanians who traffic uh, people across and use them for some prostitution. Well, it's not a way because it actually was the first book, the first crime book I actually wrote in 1989. When I, when I went, started doing my writer's workshops uh, and began experimenting with short stories and opening chapters, this, this story, uh, and an artist, believe it or not, which of course I was, I was quite strongly and I'm quite passionate about, about my art. And so I developed this character who was an artist who got a, quite a dark and a sort of dubious side to him. Uh, who got a number of secrets of, of which blood was on his hands. Uh, he'd been successful of uh, hiding it. Uh, and that was until one night he has a, a, a drink and drug fueled argument with his girlfriend. He wakes up the next morning, there's glass all over the floor and blood uh, and she's disappeared. Uh, and because of his past he chooses not to report it until a friend does that uh, and then in, in, I introduced then my first detective ever, Jack Buchan. Uh, Jack Buchan is an old stager, he can sniff a villain out and he's got Toby Alexander the artist well in his sights and he thinks there's more to this guy and so he begins uh, investigating. The thing about Jack Buchan is that he's got his own demons to deal with in the fact that his wife died uh, in tragic circumstances and he feels that he's responsible for her death. In Coming Ready or Not, um, it was, um, he was driven by the fact that uh, his girlfriend of 16-year-old um, was murdered uh, and he never resolved that crime. I always wanted to do it 
uh, and, and lo and behold, uh, he's, he's dealing with another crime. He walks into a room to find a dead body and that body is wearing a t-shirt that belonged to his girlfriend all those years ago. Uh, and it just, it, it just, his head just goes into tailspin and he suddenly realises the killer he's been looking for all these years has suddenly turned up again.